How's it going? It's Matt. Today we're going to show you how to check and replace your GE washer transmission assembly if it's leaking. The transmission is responsible for driving the washer tub during agitation and spinning. It also has the tub seal on it. So if it's leaking, you'll have water on the floor. Now let's get into it. With over 2 million products in stock and the know-how to help you do it yourself, we are AppliancePartsPros.com. For this repair, we're going to need a towel and adjustable pliers, a small flathead screwdriver, a large flathead screwdriver, a 3 8 a 7 16 half inch, and 9 16 inch socket with a ratchet and an extension, an impact driver with a 90 foot pound torque limiting extension, a 1 and 5 16 inch GE socket, a putty knife, a block of wood, a hammer, a needle nose pliers, and a spray bottle with water in it. Safety should always come first, so make sure to unplug the washer or turn off the circuit breakers to avoid electrocution. Also make sure to turn off the hot and cold water supplies and remove the drain hose. And since we'll be tilting the machine back, you want to loosen up the fill hoses with the large adjustable pliers and then finish unscrewing them by hand. You want to make sure you put a towel down so you catch any water that may come out and also label the hoses so you remember which one's hot and which one's cold. In order to first inspect the transmission assembly, we need to tilt the machine back. You can put a towel across the top and lean it against the wall if you want. We're going to use a box. Whatever you decide to use, just make sure you're careful when you tilt it back. Now that we're underneath, we have access to the transmission assembly. It's located right here on the bottom of the tub. The seal itself is actually on the top and it seals the tub. So if you have water leaking, you'll see it coming out around this plate. And if it's been leaking for a while and drying up, you'll see the white residue from the soap in the water. If you notice yours is leaking, we're going to show you how to change it out. Once the washer is back on its feet, we're going to open up the lid. And then we have to take the agitator cap off. It's just locked in with some tabs. We're just going to use a small flathead screwdriver. Pop it off. Once you have it off, you can pull it off and set it aside. Then we can reach in and take out the agitator bolt. We're just going to use a 7 16 inch socket with a ratchet and an extension. And we're just going to hold the tub while we loosen it up. Once you have it free, you can pull it out. Then we can reach in and pull the agitator out. Once you have it free, you can pull it out and set it aside. Now we have access to the hub nut. It's just down here in the middle. If it's all dirty and gunked up, you can clean it up. You can put some penetrating oil around it to help break it free. And if by chance you can't get it off with the impact driver, you may have to cut it and chisel it so it comes off. The hub nut's on there pretty tight, so we're gonna use the impact driver with the one and five sixteenths cent socket and the 90 foot pound torque limiting extension. You wanna make sure if you're taking the hub nut on or off that you use this limiter, otherwise you may damage the transmission and the threads on the hub nut. You wanna remember also that the hub nut is a reverse thread, so we're gonna go clockwise to take it off. Once you have it on there, we're gonna grab the tub and hold on to it and loosen up the nut. Once you have it broke free, you can reach in and pull it out. Once you have the hub nut out, we have to take the washer out. It's kinda of behind these spacers, so it's hard to get to. So we're gonna use a small flathead screwdriver to kinda of get one side up. Use the corner of the putty knife to lift up the other side and lift it up. Once you have everything out, we're going to close the washer lid and carefully tilt it back again. Once you have the washer tilted back again, we have to take everything off the transmission because the new one doesn't come with it. First, we're going to take the cover off. We're just going to use a 3 in socket with a ratchet and an extension to take the bolts off that hold the cover on. The lower one has the ground wire on it, so make sure you take it off of that. Once you have the bolts out, you can pull the cover off and set it aside. Then we can take the belt off. 
We just have to pull down on it while we turn it and pull it off the pulleys. Just make sure you don't catch your finger in between the belt and the pulleys. Once you have the belt off, we're going to take off this pulley on the transmission. We're going to use the 916 inch socket with a ratchet and extension to take it off. It's not on there that tight, just make sure you hold it while you loosen it up. Once you have the nut off, the pulley is a little tight on the shaft, so we're just going to grab on it and wiggle it, pull it down. Once you have it off, you can set that aside. Then we're going to take the shift actuator off. First, we're going to unplug it from the wiring harness. Just want to press on the locking tab and pull it off. Then we're going to use the 3 8 socket again with the ratchet and the extension to take off the bolts. Hold it up there while you're taking the last bolt out so it doesn't fall. Then we can pull the whole assembly off and set it aside. Make sure you don't lose the spring or the spacer. Now we're going to remove the drive motor. First we're going to take off the wiring harnesses. First we're going to disconnect the motor one. Just going to take the small flathead screwdriver and press on the locking tab, pull it out. Then we can do the speed sensor one. This one has a locking tab on it. So we're first going to use the screwdriver to lift up on the locking tab and then press on the locking tab down here and then pull it off. Once you have those free, we're going to grab the ratchet with the extension and a half inch socket. Take out these bolts that hold the motor on. Once you start to loosen up the second one, you want to hold the motor up while you take it out. Once you have the bolt out, you can carefully pull the motor out and set it aside. Now we're going to remove the uh, drain pump wiring harness. You just have to press on the locking tab and pull it out. And we have to remove this bracket so we can swap it over to the new one. So we're just going to use the extension with the ratchet and the 3 inch socket again. Take out the bolt. Once you have the bolt out, there's just a couple locking tabs. You just need to pull down on a little bit, pull it out, and then just let it sit. Now we're going to take the drain pump off because we have to take this wire harness connector off once the transmission is dropped. So we're going to drop the drain pump out. We're going to put a towel down to catch any water that may come out and to protect the floor from when the transmission comes out and when we drop it later. We're going to use the ratchet with the extension and a 3 inch socket again and take out the bolts to hold the pump on. Once you have the bolts out, we're just going to carefully pull the drain pump out of the tub and then just carefully let it hang so we can take it off later. Next we're going to take out the eight bolts that hold the transmission to the bottom of the tub. We're going to use the same 3 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension again. Once you have the bolts out, the transmission is still pressed into the seal in the bottom of the tub. So you can just try to pull it out. If it's stuck and you can't pull it out easily, 
then we'll have to put the washer back up on its feet and pound it out from the top. Then we're gonna open up the washer lid and we're gonna use a two by four and a hammer to just pound on the transmission shaft here and knock it out. Once you have it out, we can close the washer lid and carefully tilt it back again. Once you have the assembly out, we're going to take off the washer and set it aside. We have to reuse that. And then we're going to use the needle nose pliers to release all the wiring harness holders. Just want to press them together and pull them down. Once you have those two out, we're just going to turn it so we can reach in here to remove the wiring harnesses. We're just going to tilt the transmission up so we can see them. There's three of them that are locked in here and they're kind of hard to get to because they're behind the metal sheet. This far one, you can try to reach in with a needle nose, but we did it with a flathead screwdriver. What we did was reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and kind of tilt it up so we get this one side into the opening and then we reached in from there with the flathead screwdriver to press on the tab on the other side to get it to release. The front one here we're just gonna push towards the side and get the tab to come out and then reach underneath and press on the other side with our finger and pull it out and same thing on this side we're just gonna use the screwdriver and get the tab up there once you have them all out you can pull a transmission assembly out Here's the old transmission assembly and lower spacer next to the new one. The new one comes with the washer already installed and they give you this kit that has one in it so you're going to have an extra one that you don't use. It also comes with the hub nut washer, the hub nut, these two nuts which our model only uses one but yours may use both and the agitator bolt. Before we put the transmission in, we're going to clean up the area right here where the seal sits. We're just going to get it wet, clean it up. Then we're going to spray it down to make sure the seal slides in easy. And then you want to look at the inner tub right here and make sure that it's lined up as much as you can get it with the hole because we have to make sure that the shaft goes up in it first and then kind of slide it up so the seal goes into its seat. Once you have the tub centered, we're going to spray down the seal with some water to make it easier to slide in. Then we're going to put the washer on the shaft. All you have to do is set it down in place. Once you have it ready, we can put it up in the tub. Before we put the transmission in, we're going to take this lower spacer off because it's going to fall off while we lift it up. So just pull it off and set it aside until later. And we're just going to lift it up into place. Make sure it goes through the inner tub first and then kind of lift it up a little bit push it up and in and the holes should be lined up so we can put the bolts in we're just going to use the ratchet with the extension and the 3 inch socket to put all these in Once you have the bolts in, we can take the towel out. Now we can put the wiring harness back on. 
Just have to push the clips into the holes. So we got this big one first. And then we have these three right here for the other three. Then we can put the bracket back on that holds the wire harnesses. Just gonna hook it into the transmission. And then we're gonna use the three inch socket with the ratchet and the extension again to put the bolt in. Then we can put the drain pump back on, just like the seal on the transmission. We're going to get the seal and the tub wet again to make it easier to slide in. We can lift this up into place, push it into the tub. Once you have it in place, it should stay there for a minute while you grab the 3 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension again, put in the bolts. Once you have those in, we can mount the wiring harness on the tab, just push it in and lock it in. We can plug the wire harness into the harness on the bracket. Just make sure it clips in and gets a good connection. Now we're going to put the clutch back on. First we're going to put the spacer on. And then we can put the spring on. And then we have the clutch gear that connects to the pulley with these teeth here. And then this is where the shift actuator arms go to shift it. So push that up into place. And hold it, otherwise it'll fall off. We're going to grab the pulley itself, just make sure it mates up with the teeth properly. Once you have it on there, we're going to put the nut on there and get it started by hand. We're going to grab the 916 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension, tighten it down. And you want to make sure you hold the pulley while you tighten it down. Once you have that on, we can put the shift actuator on. Just have to line it up with the two bolt holes and the pin locating holes right there. And you want to make sure that these arms go right on that white plastic groove on the gear. Then we can use the 3 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension to put in the bolts. Once you have it mounted, we can plug it in. Just want to line it up and snap it on so you get a good connection. Once you have it on, we can put the motor back in. We're just going to line it up and put it into place. Make sure that the wiring harnesses are over on the right side. Once you have it lined up, and get the upper bolt started. Then we can use the half inch socket with the ratchet and the extension to tighten it down. Once you have the bolts in, we can attach the wiring harnesses. Just have to attach the motor one here, and then the speed sensor one over here. And 
and make sure you lock the speed sensor one. Just push the red tab in. Now we can put the belt on. We're just going to put it around the transmission pulley first and then around the motor pulley and then turn it to get it to stretch over the pulley. Make sure you don't get your finger caught in there. And you want to make sure that it's lined up on the pulley properly and that it doesn't fall off. So give it a couple turns. Once you have it on there, we can put the cover back on. Just gonna lift the cover up in place and get it lined up. Once you have it in place, we're gonna use a 3 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension to put in the bolts. And on the bottom one, you wanna make sure it goes through the ground wire. Once you have everything put back together, we can put it back up on his feet. Once you have it on his feet, we can lift the lid up and we have to put the washer and the hub nut in. When you put the washer in, you wanna make sure that the convex side is up. It has a green dot on it, but if it doesn't, you wanna make sure that the convex side is up. Then we can put the hub nut on. Just wanna remember it's reverse thread, so you're gonna go counterclockwise to tighten it down. Once you have it in place, we can grab the impact driver with the 90 foot pound torque limiting extension and the one and five sixteenths inch socket to tighten it down. Remember it's reverse thread and you want to hold on to the tub as you tighten it down. Then we can put the agitator back in. Just want to set it in place. Then we're gonna put the bolt in. Just get it started. Then we can use the 7 16 inch socket with the ratchet and the extension to tighten it down. You have to hold the tub so it doesn't move. Once you have the bolt tightened down we just have to put the cover on. Just want to line up the four locking tabs and snap it into place. Then we can close the washer lid, plug it back in, put the fill hoses back on. You want to start them by hand and then tighten them up with some pliers. Put the drain hose back into the wall. Turn the water on and take it for a spin. Hopefully that took care of your leak. Remember, if you need a new transmission assembly, you can take your model number and get one at appliancepartspros.com. Most orders will get to your door in just a few days. Before you go, remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons to see more of our appliance repair videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.